It's me, it's me, it's D A B L O C K. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? We got Tilly on the line. And uh, yeah, welcome to another episode of Tough Talks with Tilly in the Block. Eventually, we'll have like entrance music and you know what I mean, all of that stuff. But for now, just deal with it. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm just trying to pull up the show. Uh, We're going to do Raw from last week's. Raw. Yeah, we'll do Raw, SmackDown, and uh, TLC. Raw, SmackDown, TLC? Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I, can, I, I got some music and stuff I can remember too. Okay, so we're not doing NXT? Yeah, I, I just, I, I'm going to avoid the spoilers for this week. Sorry, Sam, but we will, uh, we'll, we'll talk about two NXTs next week because I got I to gotta, I gotta get caught up. Okay. Bro, of all the weeks to miss, bro. I know, but I've got, what? I've got Thursday off this week. Last Thursday I had to work 6 a.m. Uh, I am off Thursday this week, so I'm going to have to get up at 5 a.m. I'm just trying to prepare myself here. To tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a little flustered, okay? Like, it's one thing when a multi-million dollar, billion dollar company is taking your money and you want them to have it. It's another thing when they're just taking it from you for the fuck of it. And I'm I'm really pissed off right now. I'll tell you right now. I think I'm I think I might be like I think I might be the heel this episode. But um But um yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, side side with the demon, be, side with the demon, get slayed like a demon. That's all I got to say. I'm just saying, I'm not saying that the credit card companies are top guys, but. Yeah, they are top guys. Because they losing. To the new day. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you say, just because he's. Hey, I'm taking, according to the credit card company, just because you say it doesn't make it true. I know. So, so that's what it is. Um, December 9th? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Man, this computer needs to work faster. Fuck. Uh, All right. There we go. All right, all right. Rusev and Lana signed their divorce papers. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Off the jump? I'm just saying, this fucking... I, I got so sick of the storyline, I didn't care. But I will say this. Uh, Rusev is back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, How do I put? How do I put it? As a black man with a white woman, I don't like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it at all. It makes my wife look like a whore. It makes me look like a slut. You know what I mean? Well, not necessarily, not directly in so many terms. 
Just the propagation of stereotypes in this fucking thing is ridiculous. Like, the propagation of stereotypes in this thing is ridiculous. You go, why'd she leave? Because he hung. Why'd she stay? Like, <laughs> she ain't getting no love. Why'd she stay? Why'd she go to the next guy? Come on, bro. Nah, man. There's un- there's underlying stereotypes all over that. So, so wait, hold on, 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 hold on. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. You go leave. So, you go tell me. You go tell me that you go leave a. You go leave Rusev to go to a brother, and expect he's gonna want less sex. Come on, man. Let's saying, go. Here's, here's my theory. Here's my theory. That, uh, 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 that he, what's his name? Uh, Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Right? Okay. Let's, let's, all, let's all be 100% real here. Bobby Lashley has done a lot of steroids in his day. You, right? I don't know. I can't say for sure. I'm thinking you're way off base just a little bit. Like, no. Yeah. Nah, I don't know about all that there. Fuck, email at blockbasics at gmail.com. I want to hear the answer to this shit. Email blockbasics. Block, you're going to have to uh, ignore the fact that some doctors use this email to me, Canada, at gmail.com. So they, they, you know, it's not from me if it says that. Um, but scientists, let this man know that steroids make you asexual. They don't make you asexual. They do reduce your testosterone. They do reduce... A uh, bit of your testicular fortitude, but that's only if you're using it in excess. As far as I'm concerned, it's the same thing. If you have less testosterone because of steroids, you are an asexual. It's the same thing. If only people do what they were talking about. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> Drew McIntyre defeats Matt Hardy. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that was sometime, wasn't that, like, early, late last year, early this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was, like, mid, middle of this year, I believe. So, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, I hope 
Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders, defeat the Street Profits in open challenge. Yeah, this is a great match. Uh, Street Profits are fucking amazing. We all know that I, I love them since they showed up on NXT. Um, they've been fucking fantastic. I just uh, like the fact that I, they're putting more color on TV. Oh, are they colored? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, <laughs> you know, honestly, you don't, you don't realize until it sinks in. Oh man, I love those dudes. Street profit oh, for sure, shit. for they're sure. So, they're so dope, like they're so dope. They're great at what they do. Um, they got the charisma. Dripping the charisma sauce. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, my boy, my boy Montez Ford is an ex marine. You thought I did? I saw that on um tribute for the troops. Yeah, that motherfucker's an ex marine. He's a bad motherfucker. Um, he, uh, uh, Angelo Dawkins is the other guy that they brought in. Uh, I believe an all American for wrestling, like collegiate wrestling. Oh shit. Uh, They lost to um. They lost to uh uh. Who's it called? The OC for the best tag team in the world championship. No, right. I'm talking about their title reign. Okay. Like you can't. Their their title reign's not gonna end to anybody other than the Austin the Pink. I see that. I can see that. Yeah. That's happening, and that that'll be in the next couple months, like maybe WrestleMania. Um. Sammy Zayn and Mojo Raleigh confronted Kevin Owens. Okay, so never mind. That wasn't quite it. So what happened was, uh, while they were celebrating, while they were, like, you know, giving each other props in the ring uh, from the last match, Seth Rollins beat the pin. And Seth Rollins came into the ring and called out the office of pain, saying, hey, get out here, I'm going to fight you. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kevin Owens, who had all night been searching for the AOP backstage, um, had, before the commercial break, run into Rey Mysterio, and Rey Mysterio told him that him and the homie had Kevin's back. And Kevin said, hey, Rey, I love you, thank you, appreciate that. But, Melee involved in this, and now they're the same, said, I'm Ray said, sorry, I think you misunderstood me. What I meant was, my homie has your back. And he handed him the steel pipe that he beat the shit out of Brock Lesnar with. Yeah. He handed that to, to KO, and then KO went around looking for the AOP with a steel pipe. He came out to the ring with said steel pipe, um, and uh, called out Seth for clearly being full of shit knowing that the AOP were not there and uh, that, you know, he should fight him right then and there so that the AOP can hurry up and get there. 
Then the AOP showed up, stepped left, and said, <coughs> oh, man, Kevin, you know, I can't deal with your paranoia anymore. You're crazy. And, uh, and he fucks off. Kevin ends up going back to find AOP. Or no, sorry. That's when, uh, what's his name, Mojo Raleigh and Sami Zayn came out. Sami Zayn, in this new managerial gimmick, calling himself uh, a liberator of, of stars, is genius. Um, he came out, brought Mojo. Mojo said, anybody's tough with a steel pipe in their hand, which was a mistake. Because then Kevin Owens said, really, let's put that to the test. And he threw the steel pipe into Mojo's hand and then hit him with a stunner within a millisecond of Mojo catching that uh, pipe. And then picked up the pipe, uh, intimidated Sami Zayn off. And uh, then um, Kevin uh, went to, to find the AOP. Oh, he went to town on Mojo first by the looks of it. <laughs> he, oh, he definitely went to town on Mojo. Sorry, like there was definitely some... Yeah. There was some ass whoopery going on there. Oh, a whole lot of it. A whole lot of it. After Black Fist Kiyotozoa. Yep, sure did. What do you need to say? Humberto or, yeah. Carrillo defeated Andrade. Yeah, that's garbage. That's a, this, is a, this is trash. Uh, get, Humberto... For no reason, not for disqualifications, not for pinfalls, not for submissions, not for, you know, uh, 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 someone else throwing acid in Andrade's face. No reason that Umberto should ever get a win over Andrade, you know. That well, is, maybe that's, that's why they did it. That's ludicrous. Fuck them. Oh, man, ludicrous is in disturbing the peace. That's what? I said ludicrous is in disturbing the peace. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Oh man! Out of this. Oh man! All <laughs> right, Buddy Murphy defeats Zack Ryder. Yeah, uh, but I mean, much like the Akira Tozawa match, yeah, he did. Um, <laughs> 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 this was all in. This was both of these. Uh, uh, both of those matches were completely in service of. Build to the Buddy Murphy Alistair Black match at TLC that we will get to. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, AOP and Seth Rollins attacked Kevin Owens! Yeah. Yeah, they, sh- they really kicked the shit out of him. Uh, so, Kevin found the van that he saw AOP pull up in. Um, by the way, I love the fact that AOP just cut promos in their own languages, even though they're both two different languages. Mm. Like, that uh, Akam and Rizar, they're all their promos are in uh, both Punjabi and Albanian. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're intimidating motherfuckers. I was really sad when they came up to main roster initially. Because, A, they weren't being used very well at all. Um, and, B, within, like, I, I want to say two weeks, maybe even a month, but I, I want to say two weeks, they had decided to take um, take their mouthpiece away, which was uh, uh, my boy. Um, Drake. Maverick. No, not Drake. No, no, no. No, he, he came after Oh, okay. Their initial, the, the old guy. Um, oh, like, Paul oh, Ellering, Paul Ellering. Paul Ellering, yes. I was like, I, I was like, he has a famous, I, I was like, he has a wrestling daughter, but then I kept thinking of Rachel, or I mean, not Rachel, because it's Rachel Ellering. I started thinking of, um, what's her name, Tessa Blanchard, and then I was like, no, Tully Blanchard not, has not done any WWE stuff in forever. But, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, Paul Ellering. When they took Paul Ellering away, I was real sad. Because Paul Ellering is, like, one of the greatest fucking tag team managers. He's of, like, he's a for forgotten years. he's a forgotten legend. He's one of the best ever, man. Like, like he's, he's, he, he's right up there with Cornette and all of those he's guys. He's up there like, with he's, Heyman. He's, yeah, he's as good, if not better, like, than almost all of them. He's not better than Heyman, I wouldn't say. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, they, I have to... I think, he's, I think him and Heyman are 1A and 1B. Um, but, 
like Heyman Heyman just had more Yeah. Heyman Heyman's got more believability. Like you actually like fight you like you are for some strange yeah. reason he can pull at your emotions more. Oh, so and he's he's a master at doing that. Yeah. Paul Ellering brings that the epic grandiose uh like, you know, evil shit to it. Um so they, they bring two different things. So I'm, you know, I'm not. I wouldn't be comfortable saying either is better than the other, but they're they're both like, you know, god tier. Legendary, as, definitely. As as far as those kind of guys go, and if you're if we're just talking tag team managers, at that point you have. To, I, I mean, at that point it's it's absolutely. Yeah, Paul if it's Ellery. tag team manager, that yeah, like it's Paul Ellery. so. It's yeah, Paul that would be the one A one B because it's like tag team managers and there's the independent, right? Yeah, there's singles and tag team, and he is a, he is the goat for tag team managers. Um, so I was sad to see them split with him, but I think what they're doing now with having them just speak their own language and they're going to be you know muscle for uh, for for Seth. Uh, I think that's great. I think that's going to work really fucking yeah. well, and I hope they don't fuck it up. The Shield 3.0, bro. Nope, 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 nope. nope, nope. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's this exactly is, what I, it is. No, because this is this is. I think this is. If we're gonna compare this to anything, this is closer to J and J security. J and J security revamped. Yeah, but that's what I mean. This is like J and J security on. Well, you know, let's bring it back to this steroids. <laughs> <laughs> but they they uh they're just they're so good and they're. they're they draw you in, like even though you're not speaking the same language, they just they bring you in. They see, they bring you in when they wrestle because they have methodical pace. Uh, but I think, I think they're closer to change of security the waiter, and I'm hoping that this would be like time that will run. Oh my gosh! So uh, this week, this weekend, I'll take attention. I actually had the pleasure of meeting a gentleman by the name of Brett Shaw. Okay. Who most people on the indie circuit would actually know as Showtime Brett Shaw. And I managed to get a copy of his new intro. I could play it towards the end of the show. Nice. Um, yeah, it was, I was, I actually helped record it. So, you know, it was, um, definitely an interesting, definitely an interesting endeavor. Um. Oh, right, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. I remember now. What? I you told me about that. Did, did I? A little bit, when I was over. Um, I, it just happened yesterday. No, no, I'm talking about the music. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, I told you about that he was going to make a theme song. The entrance yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we got this one here. I'm going to put it towards the end here. And then I recorded nice. another song. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know, check out Showtime Brett Shaw on, on all social media platforms. Yeah, yeah, big shout out. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, be sure to watch your indie circuit as well because you never know, like, the way things are going nowadays, the next big star might come from that, you know, that indie gym. But, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, exactly. It could, you know, they could come anywhere. Um, let me just see here. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to find Homeboy's uh, exact Twitter so we can keep him up. Yeah, proper, uh, yeah. I, proper, proper plug here. Uh, let me find him on Instagram. Let me find him on IG. Is it Shaw or Shaw? Shaw. Um, Showtime dot... B R E T T S C H O L L. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, everybody go check out go check out the homie for a show, uh, Showtime. And uh, definitely if you're if you're around here, like if you're around the Niagara area, so, you know, go check out the show. Go check out one of the live events that they have because you know. Definitely fun shit. Yeah, man. That's what's up. <clears throat> that is what's up. Okay, so I did get the... Uh, I did get the instrument of the track downloaded. Um, cool. Show and finder. 
So, um, yeah, the next one is, uh, of course, it's taking forever. Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch defeats the Kabuki Warriors by disqualification. Uh, the WWE Raw Women or the WWE Women's Tag Team Champion Kabuki Warriors. Yeah. So th- I mean, this is um, this was purely to set the stage for Charlotte to have yet another tag team partner to fight the Kabuki Warriors with. I. I, I still feel the same insults about it last week. I don't understand what they're doing. Why? Like, I, I mean, I do understand what they're doing now because they went. And they, you know, they they did what they were going to do. I think. I think that I, I haven't watched Raw from last night, but I think that's is over ish. Probably not though. Uh, without going too much, I can't say you're wrong. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it's you know, this was it is what it is. This was a, a two on one tag team match with no reason other than to make. The make Becky say that you know she thinks she could take them both at the same time and then not um, because she you know got her ass whooped to all the way down to a disqualification because they beat her mm-hmm. beat her ass. Um, they beat her ass, eh? They what? I said they beat her ass, eh? Oh yeah, they beat her ass. They beat her last. They beat her um, ass, yeah. They, um, but yeah, so I mean, this was all, once again, just to make a reason so that Charlotte and Becky could team up and go against, um, the Kabuki, Kabuki Warriors, Warriors. In a TLC match. The cool thing was that it was, you know, it was a women's TLC match for the tag team titles and it was in the main event. First um, on so many fronts. Yeah, so that was, that was very, very cool. Um, but, you know, I just, it does feel a little bit like doing it just so that they did a first again, rather than building a good story to it. Uh, I, like, they could have just had another women's tag team that's good do a TLC match with them. Like, they could have built a story between them and another tag team that had some, like, time together rather than jumping into a tag title match in their very first... Or, well, not very first, but, you know, you know what I mean. Like, instead of a, a thrown-together team just jumping in right into that kind of match. Which yeah. makes the match seem not as serious. Okay, okay, I see where you're coming from. I don't agree with you, but I see where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's totally no, fair. Like, yeah, it, I think... Like, to me, it doesn't seem very serious. It doesn't seem like a, as much of a serious type of match if people can get thrown into it, you know... I Four, think the friend five of five days before the match starts. I think the enemy of my enemy aspect of this rivalry kind of was believable enough to. It's, but it's but it's constant with Charlotte. There's always an enemy of my enemy. That's why it's always workable. Or stale. Like for me, it's it's so like you can only do the same thing so many times before I'm like, yo, do something new with it. You yourself said Kevin Owens is right now playing the Stone Cold of this era. Right, but that's, he's not doing all the same things as Stone Cold. He's not going around and drinking beers. He's not, like, imitating Stone Cold. He's doing the stunner, like the Stone Cold stunner, which is, which is a move. But he's, he's, he's that in, in attitude and in presence. Like, people love this guy. But he's not like the straight up John Cena boy scout baby face. He is he's got edge to him. That's like that's a what's it called? That's an archetypal character, right? Like that's a type of character that gets written. Is it it's I, anti I, it's an anti hero. Yeah, exactly. I and I like when I say that he's the Stone Cold of this era, that's not to say he is Stone Cold Steve Austin doing Stone Cold Steve Austin things. It just means that Stone Cold in the Attitude Era was that he was the anti hero. He was the one who was out there all that the bass that everybody loved. Okay. All the guys all the guys wanted to be him. All the girls wanted to be with him. They wanted the shiny bald head. Like it was you know, he would be great. In this era, it's Kevin Owens who is doing the the man of the people type, you know, badass he talks shit. He he will make fun of people. He's not afraid to to get dirty if you have to and stuff. He'll, he'll trick people and, like, surprise them with moves and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's archetypal thing. Where, when you're literally doing... Charlotte is constantly a, a bitch to everyone, right? That's a character move. That's her archetype. 
But when she's uh, when she's also then every time she has a problem with a couple people, and someone else gets a problem with them, she's the and the, she it goes to enemy of my enemy is my friend. Thing. I understand that that's a trait of the, that can could be a character trait, but it's always done in the exact same way where it never means anything. I can't like, say. I don't know if it's the exact same way. I can see similar differences. Speaking of similar differences, check, wait, look out for the album Similar Differences coming in 2020. You're just uh, truly uh, in Zach Burry. <laughs> you know what I mean? The black on yeah. point. <laughs> you know what I mean? But no, I, I see where you're, again, I hear where you're coming from. Like, th- they'd have to change an element of it for it not to appear similar to what has already occurred. Yeah, it's, 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 it can't be mad lit. You know what I mean? Like, it can't be Mad Libs where there's a structure set up and you just change the names that are involved in that story over and over again. Like, that's that's lazy writing and lazy storytelling to just be like, oh, well, you know, we'll have her do that again. Oh, well, we don't got a thing for this. Oh, we'll have Charlotte do that again. And like, especially when you're doing that at the sacrifice of your women's tag team division. Like, as of right now, like, right now, for contendership stuff. Right now? Yeah. You mean right, right now? here, right now? Right, <laughs> right here, right, right now? now? Like, <laughs> there's no there's no tag team division. There's no other tag team of note in the women's tag team division. Like, there's the Kabuki Warriors. Um, there's Fire and Desire. Alex- there's Fire and Desire who are kind of doing their own thing with uh, Alexa and Nikki Cross. Yeah. There, which until for the last like six weeks has been a uh, two on another two on one scenario where it was just Nikki doing singles matches with both of these bitches until Alexa could get cleared by the doctors for the 86th time in the last three years. <laughs> Eighty six says the 86. <laughs> like she's she's constantly injured, and I I I just don't I I love Alexa Bliss. I think she's great in the ring. Alexa and I think Bliss she's is great on the mic. Isn't it? She's no but Jenny. She she's Jenny, but she's still bomb. Yeah, but she has got like, she has got like bones made of glass or something. Say yo, Stewart. Yeah, like she's she's Samuel Jackson and Unbreakable. Oh man. And the girl is getting destroyed over and over. Or again. maybe they're just harder on her because they know she's got that star power. Maybe she's getting injured on purpose. Hey, you never know, bro. The world is vicious. I mean, I mean, well, I just, I, yeah. Before I say that, I want to see some sort of like thing that would lead me to believe that. Um, because really, I mean, that you could say that about any, like, then why isn't anyone else on the top getting injured regularly? You know what I mean? Because she's not getting injured in like severe things. Like it's just a constant slate of, you know six week injuries and then six weeks on sort of thing and it's not like she does more house shows than anyone else it's not like she does any of that she's, she works with the same amount as anyone else bro I'm just giving you suppositions it's not like I officially know this shit I'm just saying I'm just wondering where that like, what, like yeah I just wouldn't I don't know I, I, I don't think I think the WWE like as a company with the people who are in it, like the, the athletes who are there, right? Like the mm-hmm. actual stars. I think right now is the least likely time for that to ever happen, ever, ever, ever in the company. You know what I mean? Like, all the guys and all the girls in the back seem to be boys, pretty much. Like, they're all, it's gang gang up in that place. Okay, party okay, I see other. what you're saying. Like, so they're, they're not going to injure anybody. Be- each other. They're not going to injure yeah, anybody. Yeah. Because of a uh, disagreement or anything. Yeah, I mean, this is in 1986 where uh, where uh, Vern Gagne tried to offer the Iron Sheik like five hundred thousand dollars to break Hulk Hogan's leg in Hogan's first match in the WWE. <sighs> like that, that happened, and that happened regularly back then. Wow. And like. People would like would just be like get jealous of someone's shine, and because people were marks for their own gimmicks back in the day, and they would like legit injure people just because of like, you know, I if I figure if you're out, I get your spot, 
type shit. It's kind of like the rap game today out here, where everybody's trying to sully people's name because they don't want them to get the success that they're entitled to. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And that happens plenty of places. Plenty. But, like, but like, we see the relationship. We see the relationship between, like, all of these bitches on social media and through, you know, pictures and the podcasts that they do together and all this random shit. And, like, all the girls... It's, so, it's crazy how many of the girls seem like they're, like, best friends for real. Other than, like, Sasha and Bailey, Sasha doesn't seem to get along with a bunch of girls. And that's from, like, some backstage reports, but also from the few Sasha had on Twitter that wasn't storyline-related uh, for the last, like, three years straight. So I could see... I'll get, I will say that. I could see Sasha maybe hurting Alexa on purpose. Okay, okay. Because I've heard Sasha throw shade at Alexa during interviews, talking about how she's not a real wrestling fan and doesn't deserve to be there the way the others do and all this shit. Uh, well, that's Which, dirt. Yeah that's, yeah, that's harsh. Well, everybody's entitled to their opinions. I wonder, sure what they would, I wonder they what they're. I wonder what they're. They sure are. I wonder and what they're super thinking. Glad. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Super glad about. No, I was gonna say I'm super glad that Sasha, Sasha's taking a little bit of time off right now, so that she can record a rap album. Yeah, yo. Eric Rowan yeah, defeats hear. local competitor via match stoppage. See, they. Wow, they didn't even give that jobber a name that, that last week. Nope. Wait. Nope, not even in the subject. No, not in the <laughs> Not at all, just... Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, even more, that's even more arms than any of the Sasha stuff. That's brutal. That poor guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, he got he got dropped the fuck out. I want to know. I, here's what I will say: they're doing really well. Accusing the local that. grappler of trying to hurt someone. Oh my gosh, the local grappler, not no name at all. Like that is brutal. He got three iron claws. <laughs> Come on, happy is that? I mean, that might be the most brutal part of the night because that move does look harsh. It does. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Um, oh. Do you agree with me that the the mystery of what's in that weird cage that Rowan's bringing around is awesome? I'm still trying to figure out what it is. Oh, I, I think it's a lobster. I don't know. I think like I think it's something weird. Like it's something unorthodox. I mean, I mean, if he has a pet lobster in there that he's talking to, that's pretty unorthodox. That's true. And the snake gimmick's already been done. Maybe it's an iguana. Then the, whatever it is, it, I, I, I need to know, and I like that WWE is doing with one of their not, like, A storylines is making me, like, feel that way right now. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the, Beatles, like, the undercard storylines have kind of fell flat for me in the last little while. But this one is, like, I just, I want to know what's in there. I really want to know what's in that fucking cage and what he's talking to and what he thinks it's saying to him. <laughs> like, I want to know all of that. Oh, bro, chill, 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 chill. Like, I want to know what it is. Uh, yeah, I want to know what's in there. Like, what he's saying, what he's saying to him. <laughs> like, I want to know what's in there. Like, I want to know what he's saying. What he's saying to him. Like, I'm curious about that. States champion Rey Mysterio defeats AJ Styles. Yeah, via uh, via Randy Orton chicanery um, is should be uh, should be stated there. Oh no, uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson were there too, so I don't know, bro. Yeah, but then you know, 
Um, but <laughs> <laughs> How so? How so? They're the best tag team in the world. Oh my god. So the, because you're the best uh, tag team in the world, you get to get away with chicanery? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, well, well, I misunderstood the rules. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Clearly. Oh my god. I love that. I love that excuse for ignorance. <laughs> Just be like, oh, I, I misunderstood. <laughs> my favorite example of that, just to take a little side change in here, my favorite example of that kind of shit was um, in the post-fight press conference for Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen uh, years ago. Um, Chael Sonnen had been winning the whole fight. Like, the whole fight against Anderson Silva. It would have been a huge upset. Um, and, and, and Chael talked so much shit going into that fight. So in the fifth round, uh, Anderson Silva catches Chael Sonnen with a with a, a, a triangle and half an out. In the post fight press conference, Chael Sonnen, a man who had been wrestling for 25 years at that point and had been in mixed martial arts for... Uh, 12 years at that point claimed to the reporters that he thought tapping out, he didn't think tapping out ended the fight, he thought it just ended the round and then it would go to the judges and he would win because of the first four (laughs) which for anybody who doesn't watch MMA whether you tap in the first or you tap in the fifth you lose that fight (laughs) wow with a dead ass straight face claimed to reporters internationally across the globe <laughs> on live pay-per-view wow. although I didn't think that it meant I lost the fight I thought it meant it would go to the judges and I would win because I beat his ass for four rounds he was lying he didn't mean that like he obviously wasn't serious I'd but hope it not was such a geni- it was such a genius troll to say to say that. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I love I love that shit. So good. Um, sorry. What was uh? What, um. Oh yeah. So uh, Randy Orton uh, came into the ring after a really great match, uh, including uh, what was almost the end of Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. almost died during that clip you sent me. Yep. <laughs> Like, that was scary shit. Um, And I was just as scared watching it the second time, even knowing it had happened. Um, But, uh, yeah, uh, Randy Orton came in, uh, stared at uh, AJ, spooked him a little bit. Uh, AJ then turned around and got taken out by Ray. Um, From what I understand, last night we got Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, they, that sounds like it's uh, going to be a good match. Both of those guys are, are, are bad motherfuckers. I would love to see a triple threat between AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and Ray Mysterio. So he says, watch it happen. I mean, it, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> it wouldn't. That's why I said it. I know, you're right. I just of this, but yeah, no, let's, uh, let's hope that the whole fucking DX, my, my the, power works here. who was it that called DX and the Brothers, Brothers of Destruction? Yeah, <laughs> that's fucked. That was a fucked one, because that's, what the heck, what the fuck were the odds of that shit? Well, I couldn't tell you, but like, it happened. It did. That yeah. was a fucked up, uh, what a, what a weird section of pay per view status. So strange. So strange. Um, yeah, was that the end of, uh, that was the main event of Raw, right? Yep. It was. Okay, perfect. Let's, uh, let's hit Smack Diggity. We gotta get through SmackDown and TLC before band practice. Yeah, bro, I got band practice. I'm practicing with Generation Gap, you know what I mean? Throwing it down. We got a couple of songs. We got a couple of songs that we're trying to polish up. You know what I mean? And that's, 
you know, just the evolution of music when it happens. Like for me, oh, yeah, for me, I'm all about growing like whatever I can and nurturing, nurturing that which you know is the, being developed. And like I got a good thing going, definitely gonna run with it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh man, it's always man. good to dive in stocks and in music. It's good to diversify yourself. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah, okay, so we're just trying to. Uh, just call it. We're waiting on WWE.com to pull Smack Diggity up. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'm downloading um, some. I'm downloading this track that I just did. Um, I sent it to the producer who sent me the beat, and yep. he just gave me, he just sent me a sample of it back. Nice. Yeah. All right, nice, Col- nice. Excuse me. Kofi Kingston delivers a royal slap to King Corbin. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if this is, if this is I mean, it's not, because, spoilers, it's not, but... If this was where they were going to go instead of continuing Roman and Baron, I'd be into it. I'd absolutely be into it. Have Kofi go for it. Mm. Um, like, to shut this guy up. Because uh, then we could get some, some Big E and, uh, you know, some everything feuding with Baron. And Baron is such good friends with Kofi and New Day um, in general. That I think they would just do great work together. Like I don't know how close him and Roman are necessarily. Okay. But I know him and Xavier Woods and him and Kofi and him and Big E are boys. Like I know they're all boys. So they would work together really well and they would definitely come up with some, some dope shit. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, well, like we. Uh, like we would see later, it would not be the case, and this was just a little bit of fun with Kofi and Baron just for this one night. Burns. But you never know what can happen in the future! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defeat Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville! Yeah, um, so, you know, I mean, no, no secret what's going to happen soon. I'm assuming we're going to be getting Alexa and Nikki versus the uh, uh, Kabuki Warriors again um, at some point, which is okay because I do like the, the feud. I do like all of those women. My only concern is the concern that I have a lot, apparently, because I'm, I'm feeling like a bit of a broker record, which is how many times do we do the same feud? Um, hopefully they find something new to go with other than um, just them going after each other and Kabuki Warriors being evil anime girls. You know what I'm um, waiting to see? You know what I'm waiting to see right now? Because I haven't heard you say it and it just popped into my mind again. The Ember Moon Naomi combination. Oh, uh, uh, I want it. Don't even, uh, don't bring it up. The combination of Ember Moon and Naomi as a tag team. It's, it's too much ass in one one ring. I love it. Um, <laughs> the the only the only unfortunate setback in that is that uh, 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 Ember is out for the next like six to seven to nine months. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. But after that, I'm into it. I'm so I'm oh my god. You know you know I'm there for that. That's my that, oh. My yeah, I, I'm telling you. Like I just. I keep, I actually made a reference to, um, I, I wrote a track, and I said, charge forward with your glowing ember, and I'm like, wow, glowing ember, yep. that would be a tag team yep. name. It would be a hella tag team name, and to have them go against Fire and Desire. Yeah. I don't, I will I'd be like, I'd be like King in the, in like 98, I won't survive. Oh, I man. I won't survive. Say, you're catching a heart attack. Oh, I'm catching. I'm catching a heart attack just thinking about it, bro. I'm like, I'm, I'm tearing up right now, and it ain't the onions and the sauce. I'm just, I am, I'm tearing up thinking about all that glorious, glorious booty. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my, my god. god. And the in ring skill. And the in ring skill, of course. I'm, oh my god. Like yeah. the in the in ring skill is definitely like formidable. It's, 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 it's formidable. Awesome, but the ass is like You can focus on that. I'll just dis discuss the in ring skill. Like the the high the springboards and like the top ropes and like just I'm not focusing on anything else for the rest of this podcast. <laughs> Imagine and be like, and you. And I'll be like, and I'll be like oh, man, Naomi's ass next to Ember's ass would be like, whoo. Oh man! Wow. So back to the back to the timeline with the revival defeating Mustafa Ali. Okay. Sorry, with the revival. Okay. Defeating Mustafa Ali and Shorty G. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, sorry, small guys. Um, they, small. I, I, you know, I, I love, I love all four of these guys. This is a good match. Um, it was, you know, it was, but they, had, the revival had to win and had to win pretty convincingly in this because it was to make sure that they look strong going into TLC. Um, because TLC, I mean, so. I feel like they didn't say it. I feel like they just said it was, was... Correct me if I'm wrong. Did they call Revival versus New Day a TLC match, or did they just call it a, a table a ladder match? It was a ladder match. So, here's a stupid thought. Why the fuck was that a, a, a ladder... Just a ladder match, right? But... Baron Corbin versus Roman Reigns, which has no titles on the line, not even the kingship, is was a TLC match. I think the kingship should be up for should be up for a contest contest. I, I think so too. I, I I sorry, I love conflicting thoughts of it. I think it should because I think that'd be cool, but I also kind of feel like. The King of the Ring has always been the King of the Ring for the next year. Yeah. So I, 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 like, the tradition side of me wants it to stay that way. But, like, the other side of me wants the feud with Roman to end, him to feud with Kofi, and for us to get King Kofi Kingston. Uh, which King, I see no problems with. King Kofi Kingston. Ah, uh, that would be great. Yes, I will sign off on that one. Oh, okay, there you are. Bailey yeah. defeated Dana Brooke. I was taking a sip of my beer. Oh, okay. Yeah, my bad. No, no worries. I was like, oh my god, my phone died, and then I looked at it. Um, <laughs> now, this Sorry. angle. Can we talk about the angle of the pick? Are you watching? Are you looking at WWE.com right now? I will in a second, because when you tell me about an angle on a Bailey picture, I am there. <laughs> Just... I don't know if you heard me earlier, <laughs> but all of the booty. I just hear it as like. Smackdown. Smackdown results. Smackdown is brought to you Tough by Fox. 15. Tough Talks with yeah. Tilly and the Brock has been brought to you by Expose the North and the Troop Gang. Bailey defeats Dana Brooke. Oh! Ooh! I like that thumbnail. Yeah, like, you see the tone and definition in her arm? No, I didn't. She has arms? <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me right now. What are you uh, talking about? What arms? Arms. <laughs> I, I thought she cut those off. That's a SmackDown Women's Champion right there. And honestly, like, I'm glad that they didn't just pull the title from her when she made her transition. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, yeah, I think the, I think the title was, I think, or sorry, I think the, tr I don't know which one's necessary for which, I think that the title and the transition required each other to work. Like, I don't think another face Bailey championship reign would have worked, but I also don't think the heel turn would have been as spectacular without her getting the belt. So, I can agree with that. I can agree with that, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I, think was... I think they, I think they, they complemented each other too perfectly to, to ruin either. It was almost like um, acquiring the championship is what made her the heel. Well, yeah, because they, she, you know, she got that the taste of that power and then never, you know, couldn't couldn't handle the fact that she had lost it. So she went, she had to go crazy to get it, and I love it. Never let story. it go. Man, I got some banging tracks that I want to play, but I can't because I have to wait till my album's ready. Ah! Uh, uh, ah! All right. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, Firefly Fun with the Mizanins. Yeah. So I love this. Uh, look, look at how legitimately scared Mrs. Daughter looks with that doll. Can we talk about that? Did they actually traumatize that poor little girl? I think they did. Just a way better actor than her father and mother. Cause Miz looks like he wants to laugh. Yeah, and Miz. Yeah, cause Miz can't act. Let's get that perfectly. I, I would say he, I say he overacts. Yeah, sorry, that's fair. I'll say he that's overacts because he can. To, to, yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. I wouldn't say Nicholas Cage can't act either, but he tends to overact. Yeah, um, Nicholas. Oh my God, Ghost Rider was a good movie though. I can't complain about oh, that. You, you bastard! <laughs> I can't complain. <laughs> I can't complain about that. Nick, yo, Cage has some good movies, bro. Don't sleep on him. What do you Cage mean? Great, no, Cage has some great movies. The fact that you just said Ghost Rider was one of them. We're we we're having a TLC match next time I'm in the studio. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. But yeah. No, his his daughter is either a GOAT-level actor already, or poor kid. But, also, that doll was scary as shit. Yeah. (laughs) Good job, whoever made that. And actually, I... Bray Wyatt retweeted a a thing from the guy who did make it. Um, But, uh, while we're... While I'm finding that... uh, Yeah, this was a great little segment. It was actually spooky. It was really creepy the way they did it. Um, And, yeah, I like this. I'm very very happy with uh, what they're doing with this. Where is this shit? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's definitely creative because I was like, I almost went upstairs to check my house. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, Oh my God. So, Ray also uh, put up a, a Photoshop of the season two picture of for Miz and Mrs. where yeah. Bray Wyatt's head has been photoshopped way too perfectly onto the Miz's body. Wow. And I, I, I it, it fucked up. Um, oh, Jason Baker. So, um, shout out to at Baking Jason, um, who is a, uh, Filmmaker, special uh, effects makeup artist, um, and he's the one who made uh, that little doll for for Bray to to use there. Um, okay. Good shit. All right. Well, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro Ooh. defeat Heavy Machinery. That's big too. Like I'm. You know, I love heavy machinery, but I like that they beat them. Um, fucking, in, and that Intercontinental title is stunning. It's marvelous. Oh, my God. It's, mar- it's, it's fantastic. It's, de- it's stupendous. It's so good. It like, still has my design included, incorporated into it. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. I-, I notice it has my design incorporated into it. Which is cool too, as long as y'all upgrade yeah. our seats to the next WWE event we go to. You know what I mean? Straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Straight. Um, I'll take that upgrade. Uh, yeah, but Shinsuke and Shinsuke rocks that new belt too. It is, it is a great combination of a perfect new belt and like that new belt on the perfect guy for it to be debuted on, because um, he's he's making that belt iconic. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, great match, great match. I love, I love Otis and Tucky. Uh, those motherfuckers are great. 
great. Uh, I think they're gonna get a push a little later in the in the. I think you know probably middle of next year. I I feel like they have to win a title, like a, a tag title. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. Kofi yeah. Kingston versus King Corbin ends in a no contest. Yeah, this is this is a good uh, this is a good match. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't anything great, but once again, it did show off that like Kofi and Baron, when they're like they can they can do great shit together because they're boys and they have like a shorthand with each other. They're able to kind of they know how each other like rolls pretty well, um, and they, they're able to pull some shit out really quickly. Um, but it did end in a no contest real quick because Dolph Ziggler got uh, ejected and then turned into uh, a, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, big, you know, big fight ensued basically between all of them. Um, and then I believe it switched to a new match. Yes. It went to the New Day, defeating King Corbin and Dolph Ziggler by disqualification. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so this, this was, I mean, this was all to build up a crazy pandemonium blowout sort of thing for our TLC, um, make things a little bit more hectic going into it. Um, I almost said, oh no, this was where that happened. So um, they tried to, uh, to dog food Kofi this time after the top guys have been, which I think was misunderstood. Um, what? <laughs> what did you just? What kind of bullshit are you having me believe here? What would you like me to? What? You think it was just a? They miss. They mistakenly came down the ramp. They mistakenly came down the ramp and just so happened to lay a beat on people that oh. were at, at ringside? Not mistakenly. I didn't say it was a mistake. It was a misunderstanding. They just misunderstood. But they have a match with the New Day. They've been the ones feuding with New Day for weeks, right? Wow. They thought, they thought they were having a match with New Day. They, came, they didn't even know Corbin and Ziggler were there. Well, yeah, it was marked as a ladder match. Son of a bitch! Fuck that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, my uh, my healery aside, um, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that switch flipped the, pretty quick. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do it on that one. Uh, you know, there probably wasn't a misunderstanding. They probably knew that Corbin and Ziggler were the ones having the match. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably. most likely. Um, probably, but um, they. They, uh, top guys took down, uh, Big E. Kofi was about to be covered in the, uh, the, uh, I'm the fucking dog food. Um, and Reigns popped up and, uh, just kicked the shit out of everyone. Uh, he beat the shit out of top guys. He beat the shit yep. out of Corbin. He beat the shit out of Ziggler. Uh, and... Uh, then they got to the top of a ladder, and I, yeah, and then and then he uh, he grabbed he, he fucking threw Ziggler off. He didn't even like punch him off. He threw him off of the top of the ladder, and just right through the announce table. Right through the announce table. Which I do want to say, uh, I mean, this, you know, slight spoilers on the TLC thing, uh, but it, it was weird that at one point. Michael Cole, on commentary for the TLC match, right? Yeah. He said that they thought Dolph Ziggler was taken out for good on Friday. What? What fucking, in what world did anyone think somebody was taken out for good because they fell off of a ladder through a table when, in, the, in the WWE? Fair enough, I saw the, the old workplace safety ad about not leaning over on a ladder so you don't fall through a glass table uh, full of stuff. But the, in, in what world did they think Dolph Ziggler, who's taken every bump in the, in the company six or 1,700 times, <laughs> was, was gone forever? 
And then he also called, in the same sentence, Michael Cole also called uh, the super kick a Superman kick. Yes, I heard that! I heard that! I'm like, what are you uh, doing? I, I damn near lost my mind. I do What are you doing? Fact, I said... The fact that we don't stream pay-per-views together watching it is a, is a crime. Just for the fact that there would have been a ridiculous amount of footage of me ignoring a match because I'm screaming at Michael Cole. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unbelievable. S- Superman kick. I was just like, are you... And he went with it the next time, too. I know he did. And he fucked up something else in between the two that I can't remember right now because the other two things were the real god-awful fucking thing. But holy shit, Michael Cole. You've been there long enough to not fuck up these moves. You've been there, done that, that like that a turban hat, bro. Before he got there. Yeah, exactly. Been there, done that like a turban hat. You can't be acting like that on the attack. Maybe he's going see now. Uh, I hope so. Ha! <laughs> All right, let's get into this TLC pay-per-view because time draws nigh. Yeah, we gotta, we're going we're gonna to crush through these, uh, these ones real quick here. All right, Humberto Carrillo defeats Andrade. Like, huh? Just twice in a row? Fucking dick. Fucking dick, WWE. I thought you guys were done with Humberto. That's what the dirt sheet said, and I believed it. And I feel bamboozled. Bamboozled, he says. Wow. Bamboozled. That's the word of the podcast. All okay. right. SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the New Day, defeat the Revival. Top guy. This was great. Um... Amazing, amazing match. I do think it's strange that they didn't give them the TLC spot, like the namesake spot, rather than a ladder match. Uh, But I also have nothing against ladder matches. I love straight ladder matches. Um, Big E, I thought Big E was about to join Xavier on the bench for a few months. Oh, my gosh, when his leg uh, fell. Oh, my God. His his leg went through it. That was horrific in so many ways and I it, I'm not even kidding like it flashed before my eyes I was like oh my god if two members of the New Day are injured for an extended period of time uh, what the fuck happened yeah like what the fuck happened because they've already done because like they've already done the championship oh, title run oh that oh my god I don't, like I don't even want to think of that because that scared the living shit no. out of me we go on to the next one then. Alistair yeah. Black defeats Buddy Murphy. Speaking of last name hey. Black, be sure to check out all your streaming platforms for Cheshire Black coming out, I want to say, 2020. I'm not exactly sure what quarter, but um, it's coming out 2020. Cheshire Black, look for it. It's going to be amazing. We already got seven, oh, yeah. I think I got six or seven songs deep. So, yeah. Um, that's I've, what's up. I've heard some on the sneak and whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta play a couple more of those for you, but, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what you do. Um, Alistair... Um, yeah, so Alistair Black versus Buddy Murphy. Fucking amazing match. Really, really good shit. They, uh, both brought it all the way. Like, they went full intensity. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Alistair's new gear. The color kind of... Oh, that, I, I, I the, love the, match. the green and black. It looked like he had a doodoo stain on his jaws. It really did. It looked like it looked like I was. I was trying not to say it, but it did look like baby shit. You did. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Great. Was not the greatest. No. All right. All right. So now we have. The Raw Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders versus the OC, ended in a double count out. Oh, they got that KFC. Oh, man, I might have to have some KFC soon time still. Yeah, this was... This was Fuck, man, I uh, hate when I see food. It makes me want to eat. Me <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm happy that I am, when you said that, I was making, I was stirring the sauce that I'm making for right after this, so I'm good. Um, <laughs> okay. I had something to eat but, before uh, I started, but, like, it's coming, it's catching up to me. <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, yeah, this was a disappointing match. It was stupid. It was just a, it was a KFC ad. Yeah. 
King Corbin defeats Roman Reigns in a tables, ladders, and chairs match. Yeah, I mean, you know, sure, there's chicanery all over the place, um, interference uh, from, uh, you know, I, I think cop guys might have got involved there again. Um, a little bit. Ziggler definitely got involved there. He popped out. That's when that whole bullshit we talked about her, uh, before came up. But, yeah, um, not not a great match. This was uh, another one. It was kind of a two-in-a-row little slump there. Yeah, top guys got involved. Yeah. Probably, Probably accidentally, he says. Wowzers. I've learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, then we got Universal Champion Bray Wyatt defeats The Miz, and the American Dragon Daniel Bryan re- re-emerges to attack Wyatt. Okay, I'm not looking at that. Just say American Dragon on that fucking... No, it does not say, it does not say okay. that. <laughs> oh, my God, I was so happy for a second there. I was like, what? Um, I, I love, I love this. It was I, awesome. I I think I marked out. A, I marked out a little bit. I did. I marked out huge through the whole thing. Like when Bray came out as Bray and not the Fiend to the Firefly Funhouse scene, and like kept like popping the crowd. God damn it, that made me happy. Oh my um, goodness! That was awesome. The then him just like being so weird and like just wanting the Miz to punish him and punish him and punish him and like getting into the whole thing that he had said to Miz, like, I can teach you to ignore pain. Mm. So good. And then when Daniel Bryan showed up, and he had his hair fucking right down to the wood, he had his beard right down to the wood, like, God damn it, that was good. Yep. That was perfect. Yep. And it, it, made, it made me appreciate what they did now, because I was unsure of why they decided to take Daniel Bryan out of the match at TLC, and now I completely understand. They needed... Bray needs to win that match. Like, Bray needed to win the match at TLC. Also, this is the perfect way to, to have both of, both Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt go over at TLC. Because Bray goes over because he beat the shit out of The Miz after taking every finisher The Miz had. And Daniel comes in looking like a million, trillion, zillion dollars. Yeah. Because he looks fresh to death again. Like, he doesn't look like a fucking... Viking? Uh, the, 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 the goddamn San Francisco hippie. A San Francisco uh, hippie. He grew his yeah, hair because he, of his Viking lineage. Why does nobody respect yeah, that? No, that wasn't because of his Viking lineage. That was because he's a fucking... And I, I didn't mean San Francisco. What I meant was Washington State. He's a Washington State fucking hippie bastard. He's a legend. I love him. I love him. I'm saying I love him for it. But he is that. But he was starting to really fucking look like that. And that bugged me for a while. I was just, I, I, I've been sick of seeing the long, long, long beard with the long, long, long hair. And this looks like the Daniel Bryan from, like, you know, when he came in. The Nexus he's just, days. He's so, yeah, exactly. He's so, he's, he is determined to, to do some cool shit right now. And I love it. All right, all right. Let's get it. Bobby Lashley defeats Rusev in a tables match. Ooh. Yeah, I, like, Rusev's the man. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get that at all. What the fuck kind of decision is that? Like, I don't I don't hate Bobby, like, despite the jokes that I make. But, like, I don't hate Bobby. I, I you know, I want him to, to be around. I want him to do cool shit. I hope him and Lana can do some kind of cool program together. Um, yeah. Hopefully not necessarily the one CM Punk pitched on uh, backstage last week. Ah. But the um, I like I, I love I love them all. I hope they can do something cool. But I don't see how you have Lana and Bobby playing Rusev, like just clowning him for weeks and weeks, and then at the end of it, you're like, yeah, well they gotta win. I guess our WWE math was off. I guess I think the WWE's WWE math was wrong. <laughs> that does not follow WWE math, even if even in the the 
the shambles WWE math exists where it doesn't really work all the time, even that, it, it wouldn't fuck this up. Oh, man. WWE... Oh, WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, the Kabuki Warriors, defeat Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair in a tables, ladders, and chairs match. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was a really, you know, it was a hard-hitting banger of a match. Uh, my my problems with the storyline and the build aside, um, it was, you know, it was a great match. They all went super ham. Um, and uh, like the stuff where they tied uh, Becky to the ladder um, and then lied it on the ground and where they uh, tied everything down on top of Becky and Charlotte and all that. That was all cool. That was all innovative, all interesting. Um, the uh, Apparently, Kyrie is injured. She's not cleared to wrestle right now. Um, I think it might be because of the chair she took to the face when she threw it at the ropes and then it came back falling into her own face. Um, might be that. No! Um, the bitch yeah. didn't give herself a concussion. Yeah. Yep. Oh she's my too, gosh. Wow. She's too little. Um, wow. Yeah, she should have got a step stool before trying to reach that cookie jar. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was... So, I mean, it was a great match. Hopefully, um, Kyrie's not too harshly injured. Like, hopefully this isn't too serious. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we will see soon. But, yeah, it was... Uh, uh, like I said, my problems with the storyline and how it's been booked aside, spectacular match. <laughs> the, women, the women looked great in the their hardcore TLC match, and it was a, you know, first... First time a women's TLC has uh, main event, that for sure, if not the first ever women's. I'm gonna have to agree. I'm gonna have to agree in part that the the overall it looked great, except for the finish. The finish was a little sloppy, for me, yeah, anyways. It, it was. I, I did like um, Asuka pulling the rope to bring down the, the ladder. I saw that as I, that was predictable. I saw that. Yeah, of course. Of but course. yeah, it was a good look. It was a funny. But, it, it was, yeah, it was funny, and it just it kind of, it was one of those things where I, when, when they first did it, I saw it coming, and then enough things happened in between that I wasn't thinking about it until it happened. Like, then once it happened, I was like, oh, yep, there it is. Yep, 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 pretty much. All right. But I, still, still very enjoyable. Oh, and then I think it ended with a men's brawl continuing, which... Yes, it ended up... Yeah, yeah, it was. So, like, I don't, I don't get why people are complaining. If, if the, if it had interrupted the match, like, if cameras had cut to backstage to show the men brawling during the women's main event, then I'd see a problem with it. Or if the men had come out and started brawling off the, off to the side during the women's match, then I would see a problem with that. But the bell rang, Oscar was celebrating, she was at the top of the ladder. There was nothing else to be done with that women's. Yeah, true. It was over. Like, and like I said, I, I, this isn't just a thing where I'm like, you know, the best match can do whatever they want with the women. But like, it's not that. It's very much a thing of like, yeah, it would be fucked up if they interrupted the match, but you can't interrupt the match that's over. Exactly. Exactly. All right. But yeah, and just like that, we got all bases covered. Now I want to play. Oh. I want to play this track because it is on Tough Talks with Tilly and the Block, and it is the new entrance theme for Showtime. Brett Shaw. It was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Showtime featuring Stoddy P. So uh, check that out. Nope. It's me. It's me, the greatest wrestler you ever see. Showtime. Brett Shaw. Woo. It's my time for showtime because it's only one time, one time, one time for showtime. And it's my time right 
now. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? Yeah. One time, one time for showtime. Woo! Get your tickets ready, you'll be bloodshed. When the bell rings, it's not an upset. No, you the intro, this my new flex. Getting dropped when I lift them up from the suplex. New star head stomp on bar leg lock. Finish them in no time. Don't hung them out to dry with a clothesline. Sold out shows with no props. I'll see you outside if you over the top. Jackhammer boy, I'm hard as nails. Bust them open off the guardrails. Right hand, left hand, I'm landing that. Fans wild snapshot with the camera flash. I'm the truth, baby, you don't understand the facts. Plus, you standing in my trap. He should know when the sleeper hole can cram in a nap. Raising the standard. Any weapon I get hands on, I'll tamper the match. Watch me adapt. No manager, but still focus. Now you can't distract. It's one time, one time, cause the champ is back. One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! Yeah, they're still the show, the show still. Doctors won't heal you. I mean that so sincere. Fighting with bar rules, hit hard in your medulla. Figure four more days, and I'm back to a sharpshooter. Skill wise, we not close. Think you all that. Till you catch a frog splash from the top rope. We all real in here. Make you take a seat with the steel chair. Down for the count, I've been known to make you. Your cast is with a first, put an opponent through a table. Watch me handle that. Take your face and vandalize fast. The first man in the scrap. Betting I'll win. Gamble a stack. Give you a sample. Put my stamp on the map. Slammed on your back. Put a man on the mat. Leave you damaged and crack. Three count from the ref's hand. Put you in the hell of a place for that belt on my waist. Middle finger to a hater. Nah, I can't be that. It's showtime, baby. The champ is back. One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! One time, one time. Yeah, you know who? One time, one time for showtime. Woo! Y'all remember to put your fingers up whenever you hear this track. One time for showtime. You know what I mean? All right, we are definitely... We definitely have come to the end of the show right now. We got it done yeah, in less than an hour and a half. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we covered all bases except for NXT, but uh, we're going to do an NXT episode next week. Yes, yes. All right, all right. Well, we can start with NXT and then do the cycle back to NXT. Yeah. Yep, exactly. That's, that's uh, my, my thoughts exactly. All right, all right, cool. Well, thank you all for listening to what we had. To going on right now um you had the ufc wait oh yeah well here i'll just say that there's the the biggest thing there's one big thing from it colby covington got his fucking jaw broken and fuck colby covington yeah wow that's it that's all, that's all i gotta know the, the stupid bastard who's been all like trumped up and carrying around donald trump's kids all the time and like bringing the belts to the White House to kill him and stuff like that. He got knocked the fuck out and got his jaw broken. Damn. Yeah. Sucks to be him. Yeah, but it rules to be us. Well, (laughs) I guess on that note, wherever you at and wherever you be, tune in to us for the one, two, three. Three. Ding, ding, ding.